Hello, and welcome to the Tech Theater Skills series. My name is Chris Schlemp. I've been an actor, director, projections designer, and theater teacher for over 20 years. And I'm glad to be sharing some of my knowledge with you. This series is on lighting design, and it's geared for someone who is just beginning their adventures of discovery in terms of lighting in the theater. The series is going to be broken down into seven parts. And this is episode two, which is all about how color works. There's some pretty hefty vocabulary coming your way right about now, including some more in-depth explanation. So I recommend you get out a pen and paper. If you start making that connection between your brain, your eye, and your hand, you're more likely to learn. Okay, let's start with something really simple. What color is this apple? Now, you'll probably say that the apple is red, and you'd be correct, at least in our everyday understanding of what we mean when something has a color. But what happens when we put the apple in a different place? What if we turn out the lights? Imagine that same apple on a table in a corner of this darkened room. What color is it now? Is it still red? Sure doesn't look red anymore. If you were going to paint this scene, you would not get out your red paint. Nothing has changed about the apple itself, but it has lost all its color. Because it never had any to begin with. The apple is not red. The color is not in the object itself. The color is in the light. You have probably seen an image like this before in your science class. White light has all the wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum, including all the colors of the rainbow, and also the ones that we can't even see, like infrared and ultraviolet. When a beam of white light is refracted through a prism, we can see all those colors disperse. White light has all the colors. The color is in the light. Now, before we look at how light actually causes us to see color, we have to get some basics about the color wheel in our minds. You've probably seen a color wheel like this one in art class before. You probably remember learning that the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue, and that if you mix yellow and blue, you get green, and so on. That's all true, but only in paint. When we talk about light, this is not the color wheel we use. This is the color wheel for lighting. It's similar, but not the same. The big difference is in the primary colors, which in lighting are red, blue, and green. Big time science vocabulary coming your way. When light comes at an object, it has those three primary colors, as you can see in this diagram. But when those three primaries hit an object that is red, or that we perceive as red, the energy from the green and the blue gets absorbed and the red gets reflected. When that red wave hits our eyes, that's how we perceive that object as red. Remember, the object isn't red itself. It's just absorbing the other two colors and reflecting red to our eyes. An object that looks green is reflecting green and absorbing red and blue. An object that looks blue is reflecting blue and absorbing red and green. White reflects all the colors. Black absorbs them all. Pause the video if you need to in order to really let this diagram sink in. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments section, or if you happen to be in my class, put them in the chat. Let's see if we can figure out the answers together. Because we have a different color wheel in lighting, that means that our color combinations are different too. The secondary colors, the ones we get by blending two primary colors, are cyan, magenta, and yellow, or amber, in the world of lighting. We're not mixing them like we do with paint, but instead, less is getting absorbed and more reflected. Cyan means blue and green are reflected. Magenta comes when red and blue are being reflected. And yellow, or amber, comes from reflecting red and green. Mixing paint is an additive process. What that means is we keep adding colors until we get to the one we want. The more colors we throw in there, the more we tend towards black. Lighting, on the other hand, is subtractive. The colors are all there to begin with and look white. To get to the color we want, we subtract the colors we don't want by absorbing them. 
Think about how filters work in your photo apps. You have your photo that has certain colors in it, and then you put a filter on top of that image, and that changes the way those colors appear. All a filter does is change what gets absorbed and reflected. Some colors pass through more strongly, others get absorbed more strongly. In the world of the theater, we use actual physical filters that are basically thin sheets of plastic that we put in front of the light. These are called gels. Whatever color the gel is, is also the color that passes through. All the others get absorbed. A white light with a blue gel in front of it can only make things look blue, no matter what color they normally appear under white light. A more high-tech kind of light is an LED, or light-emitting diode. LEDs are tiny lights that are basically encased in tiny, transparent, colored plastic shells. Notice what colors they are. LEDs can shine any color because they have the three primary colors and can add more or take away amounts of red, blue, or green to get all the secondary colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow, and every other color in between. Okay, it's your turn to try it out. Take a look at this scene from Little Shop of Horrors. What color choice has lighting designer Jason Amato made here? What do you think are the two main colors he is shining at this scene? Look at the top of the image if you need a hint. Look closely at those lights up there. Can you tell if those are lights with gels or are they LEDs? And to tie in the lesson from episode one, what is the mood that these colors evoke in the audience? How do they make us feel? You've learned a lot today. You now understand how it's the light that has all the color, not the objects themselves. You've learned about how reflection and absorption work, and you've gained some practical knowledge about filters and gels, some of the main tools in the lighting designer toolbox. Thanks for stopping by. Come back real soon for the next lesson in the series. And if you felt like you got something out of today's lesson, then please like and subscribe. See you next time.